In this unit, we are going to present the transformation of a school into a learning community. What does it mean to become a learning community? Uh, transforming a school or a any educational center into a learning community means that we are going to base all our educational practice on the best scientific evidence available to provide high quality education for every single child to guarantee that every child, every family has the access and has the experience of, of obtaining the best educational actions, successful educational actions in their learning when attending this educational center. For that purpose, schools as learning communities open the doors of the school to the entire community to transform their interactions, their relationships on the basis on those ways of participation and interaction that contribute to educational and social success for everyone. To become this process of transformation, schools around the world since 1995 started this process or transforming their spaces into a learning community. We have many different schools over the world that has been going through these phases that we are going to discuss to transform their spaces and open the doors to this community to participate in those successful educational actions. For that purpose, all the approach is oriented to transformation, never to adaptation. We do know from scientific evidence that transforming the social and cultural context is essential to provide high quality education for all. For that purpose, we are, if we want to transform our center adult school, early years school, elementary or secondary, any kind of educational centre into a learning communities, we will go through these five steps. First, the reigning awareness. Second, the decision making. Third, the dream. Select by the selection of priorities and ending with the planning. But the process never ends with that, with that point of planning. Once the centre has achieved the dreams, can rethink and review and evaluate the process and to start with the dream again. That, uh, that phases are not, are not static or fixed, are dynamic and are, are agreed in any school, uh, in dialogue with the community. The school and the centre decide how to go through those phases, but following that step by step according with the scientific evidence reported to achieve their goals and their dreams. So now we are going to see in a little bit more detail each of these phases. First, the raising awareness. This is the first step to become a learning community in which the school or the centre organise an intensive training where teachers and other agents of the community are informed with those scientific evidence that have, um, that have shown to achieve social impact. That means it's not any scientific evidence, it's to train the teachers and to, to offer that information also to family members, to community members, for them to know and to discuss what are those actions that can lead our school to achieve higher academically and socially. So researchers in a with a dialogic approach, including also practitioners in the training, deliver these sessions that are oriented to discuss or to go in depth uh, in the reflections, in the opportunities that those theoretical and, and empirical evidence can offer to the schools. Those theories and evidence are uh, come from a multidisciplinary approach, psychology, sociology, pedagogy, and so on. And most of the empirical evidence you will, um, you will discover through this mock in the following units. So the school has the opportunity to reflect intensively um, around this evidence and to contrast uh, with their own reality. So what is, what is the reality of our school and how we can move forward and achieve higher and transform our context and the life of our children using those evidence. This is an enormous opportunity that is absolutely needed for improving the, the training of the teachers um, around Europe and, and in any kind of a school. So this is a very important uh, phase to set the grounds 
for what, we, for what will be the next steps to achieve. Once we have been going through this training, we need to make a decision. That will be the second phase, the decision making. First, the teaching staff needs to reflect on their decision to take on these principles, these theories and this evidence and introducing those in their classrooms, in their educational practices. But they don't make the decisions by themselves. The entire educational community is involved in this decision and makes the decision to transform or not their school into a learning community. To organize that, um, the schools mobilize the community, invite families, community members, spread the word, go to the word's mouth or send letters or invite the people to come to an assembly and make a joint decision. It's important that the teachers, teaching staff, other staff members, administrators, they get to know uh, the information provided in the raising awareness and to share the families in a friendly and closer way for them to get the point of what this entails and that entails that the education of every single child needs the entire community and that commitment is made together by the entire community, it's not just made by the teachers. So that gives an important strength for the school to continue with the transformation process. So once everybody has made the decision and also children, students are involved in that along with the families, with the teachers, with the administrators, they decide to move on and make him more steps towards that transformation and move on to the next step, which is the dream. The dream phase. This is an absolutely essential phase for the transformation. We do know that any important change in society started with a dream. And the most well-known theories in the 20th century, Paulo Freire, in educational theories and pedagogies, he said that education requires technical, scientific and professional development as much as it does dreams and utopia. So with the inspiration and the contributions that Freire made to education, that is informed to the learning communities. And in 2006, uh, Ramon Fletcher told us that dreams are possible. Improving reality without dreams is impossible. So every school makes this big dream, this dream that the high education, the high quality education we want for our own children is the same that we want for other people's children. This ends with the double standards to provide high quality education for, one, for some kids and less high quality education for other kids and achieves efficiency and equity for everyone. So all the community dream together. They dream what they want for their schools. Teachers dream, children's dream, families dream in many different ways. Putting their dreams in a box, with the letters, with social media, getting assemblies for the dream is a way to collect all the voices to establish a common purpose and a shared goal of that school. What is our dream for the school? And the that is a way to gather and to join the entire community and to realize that the dreams that I have as a teacher as not, are not as different as the one a mom or a father or a child has. So this gives an, an enormous potential for transformation of the school because mobilize the entire community to work together towards the same goals. They put their dreams on the walls, at the street, they change their look and the, and the community get excited and engaged to, to take part of the community, to take actions to make those dreams to come true. With that, after the dream, they need to select their priorities. These are our dreams. Now we need to organize them and to set those in the short, medium and long term. What is more feasible to achieve? If we dream, for example, that we need to improve our maths, mathematics level of our children or our language or literacy skills, we need to put that at the short term and to organize our classrooms in, with that information that we had from the raising awareness, with those scientific evidence to make those dreams coming true. Science will help us to improve education and the life of the children. So we will create what we call a mixed committee, a committee formed by teaching staff, 
by families, by students, involving all the diversity of our community, which will take priority of what is more important in our school. For that reason, in each school, their priorities will be different according to their dreams. Once we have prioritized, which are our main things we need to tackle, we will take action. We need to move into action, that is, planning our last phase. In that planning, we will create um, those committees based on we have our dreams, we have established our priorities, and now each, cent each educational centre, each school, will establish their transformation plan. And for that purpose, they will create different committees according to their needs. Can be committees of learning, of infrastructure, of um, coexistence, conflicts, any kind of needs, family involvement, any kind of needs that the, the school has in their community will, take, uh, will, will form a mixed committee. Again, with representation of the entire community. But those mixed committees need to be organized, need to be coordinated among themselves. For that purpose, the school will create a kind of management committee. That management committee will uh, supervise and will take an overview about what are the activities that these committees are getting and are doing and are um, carry on. So, um, with that, uh, with that uh, approach, we have an example. For example, in these schools, where teachers establish a committee for curriculum, for extracurricular, for property, for resources any others, as you can see, from the needs of the schools for their dreams, they create their own committees, their own organizations to work towards that objectives. That becomes meaningful for the people because they have been participants and protagonists in the entire process since the very beginning. Not only the teachers, but the families, the community, the children and so on. With that organization, we see vibrant and stimulating centers where they have a democratic organization with they don't follow a rigid model and is based on an effective participation a kind of participation that has an important impact on on improving children education and social cohesion not only benefits for the children but also for the adults who care for them and we do know from scientific evidence that that is absolutely essential to achieve the highest uh, benefits for, ch for the children to flourish and develop. And of course, will be always depending on the priorities defined by the community. So that this is a way that makes effective that people engage in, because the school is giving answers and is giving so much for what they need. With that model, schools continue learning and, and improving and making their dreams coming true even in the most difficult circumstances. That process of transformation transforms schools, transforms classrooms, transforms schools, transforms their, their everyday lives in their families and in their communities, and they recover hope, and they keep in, keeping their dreams alive, where the sky is only the limit.